it stick by me and be your guiding hand but don't ask me what i think of you i might not give the answer that you want me to howdy i'm joe and this is my show joe's rides in these videos myself and my glamorous assistant caden will show you what we get up to in my workshop in town repairing mostly land rovers along with a few classic cars hot rods american cars all sorts We'll also do some videos from my workshops at home where you'll see some of my projects, more cars, bikes, hot rods, odds and sods, you name it. So if you like petrol, oil, dirt and beer, then tune in. If you're a bit woke, left wing, if you believe in climate change or you're vegan, then fuck off! <coughs> Here we have this uh, old Series 3 109 long wheelbase Land Rover. Uh, this one's in today for um, service. Uh, we've got some welding on the chassis, uh, a speedo cable, lots of little jobs. Um, but the main one, the elephant in the room, is the brakes don't work at all. Um, no pedal, no pedal whatsoever. Uh, the guy lost uh, most of the fluid, uh, topped it up, and the brakes haven't returned. So I suspect uh, there's going to be a wheel cylinder or something that's leaking. I've had a quick look at the brake pipes, I can't see any of those leaking. And I can't actually see any fluid running down any of the back plates, which is unusual, especially as it lost uh, the whole contents of the brake fluid red bar. So anyway, next thing we'll do is uh, we're going to take all the wheels off and see if we can see a problem inside the drums. Okay, so we've got all the wheels and the brake drums off of this Series 3. And uh, there seems to be problems here, there and everywhere, but I think the main issue with the brakes and the loss of fluid was probably in this wheel here. Both of the wheel cylinders are leaking quite badly. Um, shoes seem to have survived, still plenty of meat on those. So we'll replace the two wheel cylinders on uh, on, on this hub and the rest of them uh, are all sort of dirty and dusty and grimy. Uh, so the rest of them will give them all a good clean up and uh, adjust the rest of them. It really is one of those jobs, uh, it's a job to know where to stop with this one. Of course with brakes uh, everything has to be, has to be right. Um, in an ideal world, I'd like to kind of replace all of the wheel cylinders, all of the brake shoes, all of the hub seals. Um, but obviously, uh, this guy's in the real, real world and hasn't got a, a bottomless pit for a, for a pocket, so we have to be mindful of that. So we're going to uh, make it as good as we can. Um, along the way, we've found a lot of welding. Um, bulkhead outriggers are all rusty. Uh, we're going to have to do something with these. We've got a really worn um, uh, track rod end. I don't know if you come around this side, Caden. Um, we're servicing this car as well, so we check all the steering joints, and that is, uh, is is quite bad. So we need to replace that. We're going to service it, and then uh, we'll come back and show you how we're getting on. Okay, so we're just attacking this track rod end, and as I suspected, it was seized solid. So we've just had to heat up this track rod tube itself. It's still smoking, actually. We had to heat that up red hot to enable us to. Uh, get this, this track rod in free. A um, couple of things to remember. Uh, one is uh, these can be left or right hand thread. So when you're ordering parts or trying to get it undone, um, make sure you're turning it the right way and you're ordering the, the, the correct one, whether it be left or right hand thread. And the other thing uh, that's worth doing is as you unscrew your track rod end, um, take, a, uh, take time just to count how many uh, time, turn turns you turn it to remove it uh, and then you can put your new one in and it should end up in roughly the same place you may well have to go and get your tracking checked after that but um, at least if you get it in somewhere near you won't be far wrong okay so uh, everything's a battle on this car um, we've changed the uh, the track rod end which was really badly worn we had to heat up the heat up the track rod tube red hot to get that unscrewed but that side of it's done now um, Brake cylinders, brake pipes, just a normal nightmare. The nuts on the back of the brake cylinders, uh, a couple of them didn't want to do up or undo, they were just spinning around and around, so I had to chisel those off. Uh, all of the brake pipes were seized, I've had to uh, heat everything up with, uh, with the oxyacetylene torch to uh, enable me to get the, the fittings on the pipes undone. Um, so yeah, it's been about two hours on this wheel, I think, on this one single wheel. But uh, we're on the home run now, ready to put it back together. Um, so we'll get the drum on, uh, get it adjusted up. And then the next battle we have 
is we're going to go around and try and bleed all these brakes. Although, uh, before we do that, I do have a suspicion that the master cylinder has failed on this car as well, so it may be that we uh, will be doing that twice. But the next battle, like I say, we'll be getting all the bleed nipples undone. No doubt most of those will be rounded off, seized up, we'll see. So yeah, we're earning the money today. Just a little afterthought, um, having just had an epic battle with these wheel cylinders and brake pipes, etc., um, I did find that the battle was slightly easier with this um, track rod end disconnected. Uh, we disconnected that because we had to change it, but um, it only takes a minute to take this nut off and uh, knock the track rod end out of its taper. And then you've got your hub spinning left and right really freely then. Um, I mean, it's not necessary, but uh, I have just found this uh, epic battle a little bit easier with the fact that this is disconnected. So I can quickly move the hub left to right to get to the nuts one side and the pipes the other, etc, etc. So just food for thought. If you're going to do this job, maybe undo this track rod end and it might make your life a bit easier. So back on with the, uh, the Series 3. Well, I'm never off it, actually. So just briefly, um, this car's been on this ramp all week now. Uh, it was on here Monday, it's now Thursday. Um, we have done a few other things other than this, but it really has tied, tied the week up. So schoolboy error on my behalf, I should have known better. Um, car come to us no brakes whatsoever. Um, I suspected we'd have some leaks of wheel cylinders, which we did. Uh, also niggling in the back of my mind that it might have a master cylinder issue, which it has. Um, but the error I made is we took all the wheels off straight away. That was the first thing we did to inspect all the brakes. And a lot of them, like these ones, kind of looked okay. The shoes don't look a million years old. No leaks from the cylinders behind these rubbers. Um, so we cleaned all those up, cleaned the drums up, put those back together. So that was the case for three of the wheels, apart from one of the front ones, which has had the, uh, the wheel cylinders leaking badly. So having put them all back together, it then occurred to me, oh, you know what? At the end of this journey, we're gonna have to bleed these brakes. So I've been around and um, looking at bleed nipples on the on the other three wheels that we haven't addressed. And uh, the other side rear, uh, the bleed nipple's been snapped off in the past, probably 20 years ago by the looks of it. Uh, this one's pretty much non-existent. Um, the one on the near side front uh, has been rounded off. So the battle then continues. So we've taken the drums, the wheels and drums back off now. Uh, we're gonna have to change these rear wheel cylinders because uh, the bleed, the bleed nipples are just not there. Uh, and then of course the brake pipes are all C, so I've been heating those up, trying to get them out. So um, yeah, just turning into a mission really. So the car came here for a service, uh, the speedo not working and the brakes not working. Uh, and uh, we've been welding and welding, uh, outriggers, rear cross member, um, brakes are just going on and on and on. And that's how it goes sometimes. Um, so it just puts us behind, you know, this will now go into probably uh, Monday somewhere along the line somehow because uh, the bits are, haven't arrived yet. Um, so yeah, trying to say the least. Okay, well, the battle has been won with this uh, Series 3 109 at last. Um, going back to what I was saying earlier, uh, I should have trusted my gut feeling really. Um, when we first uh, started looking at the brakes on this, I should have just run the guy and just said, look, we're going to need to replace everything. So if you get wrong, you get right next time. Because uh, in hindsight, heating things up and trying to undo C stuff has probably taken as long as it would have done to just replace everything. But anyway, um, nearly all of the wheel cylinders have been replaced, uh, various brake pipes, brake master cylinder, um, and it's just been a battle. It's just been a battle all the way. Um, we've also given it a service, um, fitted some uh, halogen headlamps for him, uh, replaced the speedo cable, uh, rear door check strap, lots of little bits and bobs. Um, so it's good to go, uh, and uh, it will do him for another for another year now, I guess. Uh, so we'll be glad to see this one go out the gate, I think, until the next time. So uh, during the course of these videos, you'll probably hear me moan uh, a lot about all this uh, global warming and climate change and the environment, and all this bullshit and bollocks that's pushed down our necks. Um, I think I'm just probably a, a grumpy old man, heading into my 30s now, so part of the course, I suppose. So here's an example. So uh, someone kindly left this in the, uh, in the hedge by my house uh, over the weekend. This is a container that would have contained ad blue. Ad blue is pig's piss that uh, everyone is told now to uh, fill their car up with to save the environment. Um, I'm aware it's sold at uh, pumps in the garage as well, but uh, a lot of it's sold in 10 litre 
plastic containers, which then get, well, what happens to them? Uh, this one particular one got thrown in the hedge by my house. You see them in lay you see them everywhere. What a load of bollocks. Well, it's Friday here, the end of the workshop. We like Fridays, puts everyone in a good mood. Who doesn't like Fridays? End of the working week, weekend to look forward to. Saturday, go and do what you want. Party, have some fun. Sunday, relax, do what you want to do. And then Monday comes around. I hate Mondays. I really hate Mondays. So does Bob Gilroy, so does everyone else. So when I'm Prime Minister, which I invariably will be one day, I'm going to ban Mondays. So then the working week will commence with a Friday, then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, do what you will with those. Uh, and then Friday comes around. Yeah, Friday comes around again. Then it's Saturday, then it's Sunday. Sunday, you haven't got to worry about Monday, so you can really do what you want on a Sunday because Monday's not there, it's Friday again. Then there'll be bank holidays. You know, bank holidays normally fall on a Friday or a Monday, but because there won't be any Mondays anymore, bank holidays will start on a Friday. Then you have Saturday, Sunday, no Monday, Friday comes around again, but because it's a bank holiday, then you get another Friday. So you'll get three Fridays over a bank holiday plus the Saturday and the Sunday. Everyone, everyone likes time off, so I just can't see why that won't go down well. As well as Christmas, actually. Christmas, I quite like Christmas. Most people like Christmas, don't they? A bit of relaxing, having some fun, eating, drinking. Yeah, it's a, it's a good thing. So if it's a good thing, why don't we have more of it? Um, during the winter, winter's cracking in England, isn't it? So let's have, let's say four Christmases. Let's have a Christmas in November, one in December, January and February. That'd be nice, it's something to look forward to every winter month. So yeah, when I'm Prime Minister, that's where we're gonna be. Vote for me, won't you? Anyway, so it's Friday, and this is the job we've got in today. This is this old Elvis, owned by uh, an elderly gentleman. He doesn't use it a lot, it gets taken to, to shows, uh, has, has some runs out on sunny days. Um, many years ago, he told me that there was a problem with the brakes on this car, maybe four or five years ago now. So we took them all apart and uh, couldn't really see too much wrong, but I did measure the uh, brake drums on the car and realised that they were all uh, out, out of shape, they were potentially they were oval really, and they had some hard spots. So the drums were skinned, uh, all the shoes and everything else looked to be in good order, and we put it all back together, uh, and it's been great since. But he's just told me recently that the, uh, the brakes are not what they should be again, so we're gonna take them all off. I don't expect to find much wrong in there. They're all in good order. Although it's four years ago, I doubt the car's done many, many miles. So I think we'll just be uh, giving them a clean up and a quick inspection and uh, probably adjust them up again. So that's what we're going to do this morning. So we'll see how we go. Okay, so we've got all the wheels and the drums off of the Elvis. And as I suspected, there's nothing really untoward going on inside any of these uh, any any of these brakes. They all look to be in good order. Still plenty of meat left on the shoes. Uh, the drums all look fine. So we've got a fair bit of rust here and there, and we've got a fair bit of dust here and there. Rust and dust. Um, Rust probably where it doesn't get used a lot, and dust from where it is being used. So I think we're just gonna clean everything up, wash everything down, um, put everything back together, adjust these brakes up, give it a run, possibly adjust them again, and I think that's all that we really need to do here. And then we can give it back to the guy, and he should be good for his, uh, his shows and his runs out next year. So yeah, nice little job, nothing to worry about. So I'm just, uh, just blowing some of the rust out of these brake drums and uh, sometimes it's difficult to get an airline down in this workshop shop because of the attention that the airline receives <laughs> from the dogs. given this old Elvis a road test and uh, I can confirm that the brakes are really good actually uh, surprisingly good for rod brakes so that's another job ticked off drives absolutely superb absolutely superb so much better than the plastic cars that they sell now good old thing so that just uh, leaves me to say hey hey you old boy remember 
like and subscribe.